It's the first visit by a government minister to China's troubled western region. But is George Osborne's visit to Xinjiang a political coup for China or just a scheduled stop on the British finance minister's tour of the country? He says he's there to boost trade ties and won't shy away from raising human rights in private. But as John Sudworth reports from Xinjiang, China's critics aren't convinced. Xinjiang may seem an unlikely place to lead a trade delegation, with its checkpoints and the lines of young men being stopped and searched in the street. This far western region of China is home to the Uyghurs, a mainly Muslim minority with cultural and language ties to Turkey. The high security jails here are full of those rushed through China's heavily rigged court system on charges of separatism or terrorism. This prison holds Ilham Totti, a respected academic and moderate critic of Chinese policy whose life sentence has sparked an international outcry. The British Chancellor says that this trip is all about building stronger economic ties, but critics will say he risks handing China a propaganda victory too, a seeming endorsement of its harsh policies here in Xinjiang. There's some uncomfortable timing too. The visit comes exactly a year to the day that Ilham Totti was convicted and locked up in this prison for life. His daughter, Johar Ilham, is studying in the US from where she told me she wants George Osborne to raise her father's case. I wish the British politicians can tell the authorities that Ilham Tohti is not a terrorist. He has been like shackled and beaten and denied for food. And he, uh, technically we can say that he had suffered a lot. China believes that Islamic extremism is fueling the Uyghur militancy that has claimed hundreds of innocent lives in recent years. In response, young men have been banned from growing long beards. Government officials are prevented from attending the mosque at all. And fear is everywhere. <laughs> Do you think it's fair that you cannot be both a practicing Muslim and a government worker? <laughs> I don't know. We're just ordinary people, this man says, adding, we have no rights. At that point, we are stopped from filming by the police. In fact, wherever we go, we're obstructed or followed by these police minders. Is this really a place to bring a British trade delegation? Amnesty International thinks not. At the highest level of the UK government, there's certainly a sense that not only you have to ignore human rights uh, in China to do business, but you have even to make a song and dance about how much you're ignoring it and sort of uh, ready to ingratiate yourself with the Chinese government to do business. The British government says it does raise human rights concerns in private. In public, though, the talk is of an ever closer partnership, including here, in one of China's most troubled regions. John Sudworth, BBC News, Xinjiang.